Washington. This is the expo site. It'll be held from March 15th to September 13th, 1970, at Senri Hills in Osaka. Over 70 countries are participating in it, and we have a chance to learn about their industries and culture and more than 100 specially built pavilions. I feel like I'm in the city of the future. In a way, you are. All the scientific and industrial progress of mankind is shown here. The same knowledge that advanced us into the space age. Hello and welcome to Hello, This is the Doom Show. I am Richard. Folks of all ages and demographic demographics? I don't know. I'm here with Tyler. Tyler's back on the Doom Show. Hello, sir. Hey, how's it going, Richard? Yeah. It's I don't going. I'm doing such a dramatic voice. I'm just like, hey, what's up? Yo, I'm Tyler. <laughs> hey. <laughs> We're talking about kaiju. Yeah, dude, you picked a movie. Uh, you gave me some choices, and I was like, well, I want to talk about that. So what did we choose? We picked Gamera versus Jiger, or as some of the people in the dub say Jiger. Or uh, Gamera versus Monster X. Yes. Or, let's see, what's the the official translated title over here? I think it's Gamma versus the Devil Whistle. Let's find out. Wow. Or the Knife Whistle. I love it. Knife Whistle. Yeah, we don't have a big history of Kaiju. I thought this was the first Kaiju, and you were like, nah, dog. You did Shin Godzilla years ago. You did Hideki (laughs) Anos. Shin Godzilla. Very little uh, Kaiju coverage, but not for lack of love for for the genre. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, oh, it's Gamma versus Giant Devil Beast Jiger. Wow. Bam. He lives up to his name. They know how to sell a movie over there. Yeah. So this is 1970. This was the sixth Gamera movie. Um, my history with this series, real quick, is I watched the first one, and then I saw a little bit of one of the, uh, the 90s ones, the comeback. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Damn it. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting. Yeah. Somehow I didn't have to clear my throat for an hour while we like just talked about nothing. (laughs) Uh, Then after seeing a little bit of one of those on cable, uh, I got the Elvira Mistress of the Dark uh, (laughs) Gamera Super Monster. Is that what it's called? Yes, it (laughs) is. Gamera the Super Monster. (laughs) And I started watching that and I was like, I watched this when I was a little kid. So I, when this episode of Elvira aired, I actually saw her talking about this movie because I oh, remembered nice. the whole subplot of the alien girls and the one bad space lady. Yes. Oh, that's, I want that. I want that whole movie to be that and not the clip show. Because when I rewatched yes. the gu- the Gamera one, not only is it every Gamera movie's greatest hits, which I hate clip show movies, Tyler. Mm-hmm. Hate them. It's also like just random footage from uh, the space battleship Yamoto. Yes. For no reason. And um, Galaxy Express 999. That's the one I'm thinking. Yes, it's one of those. They did both of them. Yeah. Oh, my God. God, God, God. Uh, Captain Harlock showed up for a second just to say, yo. <laughs> what up? <laughs> so for some reason, I've sort of seen all of them. But I, you know, this is very new to me. I always forget the whole vibe of the Gamera series, especially these early ones. Mm -hmm. It's just Godzilla was too scary. Let's make the kiddie version. Yeah. 
and oh, yet man. bloodier. For some reason, it's the kitty version, but yet it's even more gruesome and gory, <laughs> which is amazing. I found the German trailer because, unfortunately, uh, this Gamera movie was never released to theaters in the United States. Yeah, it went directly to television um, under the title you said earlier, um, Gamera vs. Monster X. It was actually um, the only one of the movies that um, really wasn't released theatrically, and it wasn't even released by Sandy Frank in the 80s. So that's why this movie was never covered on Mystery Science Theater 3000. Oh, um, wow. Because it was owned by a different company. Interesting. <laughs> that's, a, that's a rights issue. Yep. So I don't know why I said that that way. That was weird. So <laughs> here is the German trailer for our, our, our German friends out there. Uh, and I will say a very common German phrase, Das Glapo del Mondo. Oh, what does that translate to? I don't know. It wasn't German. It was mostly Italian for some reason. Oh, okay. <laughs> Please help me. <laughs> Höchste Gefahr für die Weltausstellung. Die modernsten Bauwerke aller Nationen kurz vor der Eröffnung von Gigar bedroht. Katastrophenalarm. Immer mehr Hotelbuchungen werden zurückgezogen. Wenn es uns nicht in allernächster Zeit gelingen sollte, Jigger zu beseitigen, wird es uns nicht möglich sein, die Ausstellung zu eröffnen. Das hat uns die Teufelspfeife eingebrockt. Also, meine Herren, lassen wir uns was einfallen. Jigger, das ist Jigger. Ja, das ist Jigger. Jigger, das größte von Frankensteins Monstern, ist aus tausendjährigem Schlaf aufgeschreckt. Die Vernichtung der Erde steht bevor. Die Menschheit ist hilflos. Kann Gamera noch helfen? Gamera gegen Jigar. Frankensteins Dämon bedroht die Welt. So, das macht doch Gamera, habt ihr mir gesagt. Gamera ist tot. Jigar hat ihn wahrscheinlich auf dem Gewissen. Ist Gamera vielleicht doch noch zu retten? Zwei mutige Jungs versuchen es. Mr. Ryosako, ist das U-Boot auch sicher und tauchfest? Aber ja, selbstverständlich. Ich hab's ja zigmal getestet. Ach, nicht doch, Vater. Aber dass die Kinder da drin sind, das ist ja ein Ding. Ich habe doch nicht im Traum daran gedacht, dass Kinder damit mein Tauchversuch unternehmen. Mit dem Mini-U-Boot wagen sie sich in Gameras ungeheuren Leib. Sie schaffen es. Gamera lebt und der Kampf der beiden Giganten beginnt. Gamera gegen Jigar. Frankensteins Dämon bedroht die Welt. Dato, er bleibt, wo sie ist, sonst würde Jigar frei werden. Bitte, Exzellenz, einen Augenblick. Ach nein. Das kann ja nicht gut gehen. Das halten Gameras Trommelfälle nicht aus. Bestimmt nicht. Jigar setzt überirdische Vernichtungswaffen ein. Aber Gamera hat noch ganz andere Überraschungen. Gamera gegen Jigar. Frankensteins Dämon bedroht die Welt. Hier präsentieren die japanischen Trickmeister den absoluten Punkt ihres Filmschaffens. Dieser Film ist das bisher sensationellste aus der unheimlichen Welt Frankensteins. Gamera gegen Jigar. Frankensteins Dämon bedroht die Welt. Okay, that was the German trailer, and now I'm going to read. I couldn't find a VHS tape, because God help me, I don't think this was ever released on VHS in America. So I found something called East-West DVD. Okay. It's a, it's a double feature, Gamera vs. Monster X with War of the Monsters. Ooh. And um, hope you're comfortable, Tyler, because I'm going to read the long plot synopsis. This might, we won't even need to talk about the plot. You ready for this? I am really ready. <clears throat> I'm going to clear my throat again for dramatic effect now, not just actual human need. <clears throat> A giant creature attacks Japan during the World's Fair, and it's up to Gamera to stop it. Dang. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's a lot better than the back of the Blu-ray, which has a couple more sentences. I wish every freaking horror movie had a synopsis like this. Yeah. This would make my life so much easier. <laughs> God, you know what that reminds me of is just the the insanely long uh, back of the box for Ghosts of Hadley House. Because I'm going to bring up that movie every podcast, damn it. <laughs> Dude, I did a disservice to that movie. I have totally watched the worst version of that film you could possibly watch. Because <sighs> I was reading an article. Was it uh, Was it Bleeding Skull? Yeah, they just, they actually did a review for it. Yeah. This loving review of that movie. And I was like, all I could think about was my video where I like throw it in the sink and pour water on it or I throw it across the room. It made me so angry. What is this, Red Letter Media? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Plinkett took a shit on the friggin' DVD. No, I just, I was so angry because whatever there was in that movie was tinkered with 
Damn you, Hadley House, I sold it to you. Not everything has to suck. <laughs> God, we're showing our hand with the Plinket love again. God. Mm-hmm. We just lost the audience we didn't have. We're in negative digits, man. Hey, that, that's good. That keeps us humble. humble. That's the word yeah. I wanted. Wow, we said that at the same time, twinsies. Ooh, ooh. I've never ooh. described myself that way before, so it's a very special moment. <laughs> so, uh, Gamera versus Jiger, or Jiga, or Monster X, directed by Noriaki Yuasa. Yes. And uh, he's no stranger to things with giant things. He's done so much stuff. Just all, like, not every Gamera movie, but most of them? He actually did all of them except for Gamera vs. Baragon, which is the uh, second one. Wow. And that was a different director. But he Yurasa did uh, do the special effects for that film. Nice. Um, he directed one episode of a show I like very much called Iron King. Yes! Which is uh, one of those $5 uh, Mill Creek, for, you know, five bucks for the entire series. I actually think I found that one at Walmart. It totally okay. blew my mind. And a uh, very, very fun show. Uh, he also uh, worked on Ultraman 80, which... Uh, did you send me that? Or was that part uh-huh. of the Ultraman show you sent me? Hello, folks. What? What? I sent you um, Ultra Q, Ultraman, and Ultra 7. That's what it was. Yeah. Oh, you couldn't send me Ultraman 80, you cheapo. No, I don't even have I don't even have um, <laughs> bootlegs at 80. It's coming out soon for Mill Creek, though. Nice. Well, I know it's going to happen there. I'm going to buy it for myself and there you save go. you money. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've I've already bought the, uh, the the four that are currently out of the original run. That's amazing. So uh, this film starts. We'll get back into trivia in a bit. We'll we'll talk about uh, this cast as we we get to their their mustaches shortly, <laughs> and uh, we'll get back into trivia because I know you brought some some fun stuff about this one. I found just a little bit. This opens with a what else but a clip show to keep you up to speed of the previous installments of the Gamera movie. We got the mm-hmm. lovely Gamera song. Uh, mm-hmm. When when the song kicked in, Liette is like. Uh, why are children singing that? <laughs> she didn't know. She didn't know. I'm like, this is for kids, man. This is for kids, man. It's a, this it's isn't a baby show. Of Godzilla. Mm-mm. This is like Godzilla's playtime with just more blood splattered everywhere. Yeah, Godzilla's revenge without the little kid. What's going on in this one is the Japanese expo, the, the World's Fair of sorts... This is a real thing that happened in Japan, and parts of this movie feel like a big commercial for it. It's so cute. Oh, yeah. Uh, we meet um, our, our buddy here named Hiroshi, played by uh, Zutomu Taka. Oh, I could do the better than that. Takakua. There you Sumomo go. Takakua. We're gonna, I'm going to edit that so it sounds like I got it the first time. My Japanese is... When you look at a Japanese word, just say it how it looks. That's the fun. Unfortunately, the guy whose name I just struggled with for 18 minutes of podcast time, this is the only thing he did. Yeah. Damn Boy, it. Boy, does he have those eyebrows. <laughs> what a cool dude. Um, his his voice is annoying in both versions, the, the English and the Japanese, so I find him very relatable. <laughs> it's one of our kinnies. Yeah. He meets up with... Uh, his his sister's boyfriend uh, or fiance. I don't know what the relationship is there. Uh, this is Mr. Sawada. Uh, K- oh, I'm, see, I'm, I was showing off with my Japanese skills. Now I'm <laughs> flailing around like an idiot. Uh, Keisuke Sawada, played by Ryo Hayami. Yes. Let's talk about this actor for just a moment. Oh, yes. This dude was Kamen Rider. Yes, he was. <gasps> that was actually in my trivia. Nice. It's actually he was Common Rider and oh god, there's only like a billion Common Rider shows. It's X something. Hold yeah, on. Common Rider X and then some movie versions. Looks like maybe they had a theatrical Common Rider. For Ultraman, they released some of the episodes as like like two parters into one as like a movie. Nice. Oh, he's also Common Rider Black XR from 1988. Well done. Let's see, do do do, a lot of stuff that's not been translated. Ooh, what's this? Cobra 2. 
Is that a Japanese sequel to the Sylvester Stallone movie? Oh, I wish. No, oh. it's not. That sounds cool, though. <laughs> I want a Yakuza version of that. Keshi Mike, come on. Do you know what I immediately thought of? I thought of uh, Space Adventure Cobra. Yes. <laughs> I thought about that, but I don't think that's related. <laughs> There's some odd connections um, in good old Japanese sci-fi, so it could be anything. It could be anything. There's another movie he was in called Wicked Woman Mantis. It's a mystery film. I want to see that. Yeah, this looks this looks funky. Is it a pinky film? Pinko? A, pink, a pink violence? Uh, pinku, yeah. Is it? Okay, pinku. here's folks at home. Here's the thing about Japan. This is not a sweeping racist rant I'm about to do. This is this is literally about me trying to find Japanese films. It is so freaking hard to find Japanese films. You go through and you notice that such and such actor was in 55 movies or such and such director did 27 movies or this actress was in 160 films. And you see all these amazing titles that are translated to English popping out at you. Boom, 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 one after another. And they're all incredible. Good luck finding them. Oh, yeah. It's so, it's such a weird, like, black hole of, like, like where did these movies go? I don't understand. Yeah, because that's the same issue I have with, um, you know, not to go back to Godzilla too much, but um, the director, June Fukuda, who made uh, Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster yeah. and Son of Godzilla. His whole filmography, there, there's all these really cool, like, adventure films and Yakuza movies, and there's even one called The Weed of Crime. And there's a U.S., or not a U.S., but there's a, an English-translated uh, trailer where it's dubbed and it was like an export version for all the English language countries. And no one, no one can find it. I've looked at torrent sites. I've looked Jeez. on Japanese DVDs and it looks bonkers. It really does look like, like a teenage version of uh, the Yakuza papers, the Kinji yeah. Fukusaku movie. And I'm just like, wow, this needs a U.S. release ASAP, guys. Come totally. on. Totally, Folks at home, if you know why... Like, what is the attitude of, of film preservation over there? Are there the films that are considered, like, trashy or uh, disposables, you know, like, pop cinema? Does that stuff just not get stored? Yeah. Are they more apt to just throw shit away, which is depressing? But, you know, for every, you know, 30 films I can't find any even trace of a plot, there's always Wolf Guy or, like, yes. some bizarre. Bat. Yeah. Oh, that's that's podcast worthy right there. That's a good movie. Duly noted. Duly noted. So anyway, long story short, too late. Getting back to Mr. Sawada. He actually works at this Japanese expo deal. And so he's taking our pal Hiroshi uh, in a, a one of those cool military Jeeps to go check out the whole all the pavilions. And it is like just like I said, a commercial for it. It's so adorable. They stop every two seconds to go, and look, this is the Switzerland <laughs> complex, and this is Australia. Nice. Because um, I have the, uh, I think it's a Mill Creek set called the Gamera Legacy Collection. Yes. <clears throat> now, they have no extras at all because it's like three movies per disc, but they're in really nice widescreen. Yeah. Like really nice. These actually look really good. Uh, and it's... Uh, Akira Kitazaki is the cinematographer on this. And sure enough, the old career killer, the old uh, a movie studio destroyer itself, Gamera Super Monster, was the last thing he filmed. <laughs> <laughs> the, the last ah. movie before bankruptcy was final. Uh, but yeah, he filmed one, two, three? One, two, three, four. He filmed four Gamera movies, I think. Maybe three. Anyway. But... Uh, it's just, man, this movie looks so pretty. Oh, yeah. And there's a couple of, like, really disorienting uh, fisheye lens moments when they're doing, like, this super panoramic shot. And the whole the whole expo is just melting as it's the camera's turning. And I was like, whoa, whoa. whoa man. This is also the, the LSD pavilion. You know, just some of, like, the, like the matte paintings and how... They do some of the, the, the special effects shots, like every every scene, even though some of them are a little janky looking, everything looks spot on because I'm watching it from the Mill Creek Blu-ray set and it's actually got four movies shoved onto one disc. 
of course. So I was like, oh man, this is going to be bad. But actually, it's really good quality. And of course, I checked this morning. I forgot that uh, Arrow Video is getting ready to release the whole series on yet another Blu-ray set. So, Oh, man. Just in case you didn't already have two copies of it. Oh, my goodness. There's a uh, a very important plot point here. A very important man with a mustache. We're going to talk about Dad, uh, played by <laughs> Kon Omura. <laughs> now, unfortunately, he has that tiny little Hitler stash, so I was calling him Japanese Hitler or Jitler. <laughs> um, <laughs> this guy, very prolific actor. Oh, yeah. Especially for the Gamera series as well. He's in a lot of the Gamera movies. So amazing. Uh, he is developing a a ride for children for this expo. I don't know why I'm explaining this. this is so dumb. But he's <laughs> he's built this little submarine for children, which is going to be very important later. Yes. Uh, he says it can only go down three feet underwater, but we obviously uh, are given the treat of him making it this <laughs> fully functional child sub, which will yes. become how the day is saved in this freaking movie. <laughs> And it's got a lovely giant, um, giant painted on uh, label for it that says Expo 70 on it. So <laughs> just in case you didn't have enough commercials for it. Oh, boy, it's so great. One of the things about this this expo is that they're literally stealing important cultural monuments from all over the world. They're not recreating them in stone or plaster or like just building replicas. They're literally flying all over the world and doing cultural appro- appropriation like in the most extreme because there's a gentleman from Africa. <clears throat> I believe his name is Mr. Gimbo. It is. And he's very, very angry. Um, I was a little worried about this portrayal, but mainly he's just perfectly in the right. He's totally just a pissed off dude. And I'm like, okay, he doesn't want them to steal this very important landmark from where he lives. What was the name of the place he was from? Some island? Oh, uh, El- Western Land? Yeah, Westerland. Western Land. Western, Western Island. island. There we go. Between the two of us, we we got it. Yeah. And it's, you know, supposed to be it's it says in the subtitles um that it's he's speaking a African language. Yes. So <laughs> it's it's not really decided if this island is part of Africa or part of Asia, but they say he's speaking an African language. Yeah. So which is a bunch of gobbledygook. That's probably the only really bad part is that yes. It's it's not I don't I mean, I'm pretty white. Yeah. So I don't know how offensive it is, but I wasn't like, I wasn't nervous. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes yeah. Japanese movies, they go for it. This is a country who has a, a gentleman who's made a career out of being, being a Louis Armstrong impersonator. And it's the most horrific garbage, like minstrel show shit ever. It's so bad. So we, we made out. Okay. Now, long story short, we made out. Okay. With Mr. Gimbo here, he warns them if they steal this huge, huge monument it's going to bring about a curse so Mm -hmm. don't steal it and what makes the monument even scarier is it's actually called the devil's whistle yes so that's like another telltale sign don't mess with it guys don't don't blow it hey hey so they use jet powered freaking helicopters and they steal this thing and uh it immediately makes the volcano on the island erupt and as they're flying away with it it starts to whistle and it makes everybody who can hear it nauseous and sick. Yeah. And while this is happening, uh, Gamera actually, this is when he first shows up in the movie proper. He comes in to interfere and they're like, oh, no, Gamera's gone crazy. He's trying to attack the monument. And it's like, no, he's trying to tell you, do not mess with that. Put it back in the earth. This is like a Fulci movie because no one listens to children. Yes. Because <laughs> the kids are literally like, we know Gamera. Put the stupid thing back in the ground. He doesn't want you to take it. And so he can't speak. He's he. he that's the only way he could help is by intervening. I'm telling you. Uh, they, they constantly mention the fact he can't speak, even though he spends a good chunk of the runtime roaring for random reasons. <laughs> uh, they should have done gim- a Gamarian dialect as the subtitle. <laughs> It could be like uh, Godzilla versus Gigan, where uh, they actually have the monsters speak to each other with little speech bubbles. <laughs> that's that's a wonderful moment. So Gamera's honor is at stake. As usual, adults are just, they just don't understand. 
One of the things I love about Gamera in this movie, I don't know if this is true of the whole series, his landings are terrible. <laughs> Does he always flop onto his belly with no grace whatsoever? Um, some somewhat, or or he almost drowns while trying to swim to a prey. <laughs> Does he just spin? Because I've seen him spin to the ground, but this movie he has this incredible landing. Like, <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and, and and it doesn't help matters that um this I'm I'm cheating a little bit because this is from my trivia notes but Ooh, uh, it. it's the same suit from the previous movie which is Gamera versus uh, uh Giron or Gilon and the only thing they changed about the suit was they changed the face so he's got a really doofy face in this movie <laughs> and I'm trying to be nice to him but this is not the most flattering uh, Gamera suit hey it's all right Jigger looks like Kelsey Grammer so he's he's doing good. <laughs> I'm Kelsey Grammer. Oh, there's some tossed salad and scrambled eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Good old Jeeger shows up after they steal this thing. And uh, he's something. He's a, he's a monster X if there ever was one. Yep. yep. He's kind of scaly and, you know, he's a, little, he's a little devil. He's a little devil. He's got a nice little pudge. He's very cuddleable. My favorite of his power. Well, first of all, he's steam powered. Yes. So he drinks water to to heat up and and be steamful. Then he has this freaking awesome death ray that blew my mind. Yeah. It freeze frames the image and you can see the car stopping and he like evaporates parts of the city. Yes. People turn to skeletons, which I'm like, that's not terrifying. He also um, hardens up his saliva and shoots them out as darts. Yes. So uh, those are actually used when he first fights Gamera. You know, Gamera's kicking kicking his ass, like just picking him up and then dropping him and then flying up and picking up and dropping him again. And it's actually, you know, almost, you almost feel bad for Jiger because you're like, oh, man, almost. Gamera just needs to leave him alone. <laughs> it does make you feel bad for him. And then he freaking starts shooting his sp- little uh spikes out his little spit darts of course gamer being a turtle it gets both of his arms and both of his legs and he falls <laughs> down on his shell and he can't bring his arms and legs in. <laughs> <laughs> he can't bring his arms legs in to fly away so he's just oh, stuck God. on his back trying to get out of there oh man it's so fun i th- this these battles are just wonderful now, this is probably the most clumsy gamer has ever been in a movie and then something I do not understand happens. Gamera gets poisoned or gets um, turned to stone? What happens to Gamera where he freezes? What the hell is that? It's really vague, but it's pretty much just he's, I guess, temporarily frozen or, or hardened. It's kind of like the, the um, hey it's kind of the... The spit thing again, where the saliva goes in and becomes solid. But pretty much when this happens, uh, Jiger has a little spike in its tail and it stabs Gamera in his in his neck. And he also has suction cups on his feet. So Gamera's stuck there while he gets uh, impaled in the neck. And not only does he get hardened, Jiger impregnates him with a parasitic baby which is really adorable because it's literally just another like miniature jiger that's just walking around in gamma's oh intestine my god so so <laughs> thank you for explaining that that's way better than i got i had no idea what's happening <laughs> the because all of a sudden the baby just showed up and i was like oh, 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 oh. The, the thing that really amazed me was the gouts of green blood shooting out of Gamera when he gets stabbed in the neck. Like you were saying, this this is so bloody. But it's good appropriate because it's not red. But then, well, we'll talk about the, the freaking whole, my favorite moment in the whole movie, uh, the, vi- the bloody violent moment later. So the kids try to help Gamera. They get into the sub and they like go into the water and they go into Gamera's mouth. Yeah, before you can say Fantastic Voyage, they they go in there. As usual, the children are going to save the day. There's even a scene where the children are negotiating with the scientific community. Okay, you're going to use the sound waves because the, the, the devil's whistle is actually irritating. Yeah, it's poisonous. It'll make Jigger go away or stop and go to sleep or whatever it does. But if you take care of that, we'll get in the sub... Hold on, my cat's getting in my desk. No, no, no. Hey. No, kitty. No. So, <clears throat> sorry. We have a plot synopsis, damn it. 
they're like, we'll go in the sub and go fix Gamera for y'all. No sweat. We're children. And oh my God, dude. Like when they run into the guy in the suit who plays Jeeger, it's very clever just having the same costume worked for two different characters. It's so great. So you just see children hanging out with the man on all fours. <laughs> It's <laughs> so funny. I love it. Uh, but they use, it shoots glue spit at them, which looks very naughty. Yeah. And it gets sticky, which, wow. And then they, they manage to throw their walkie-talkie at it, which sticks to his head and does feedback, and they actually kill this parasite slash Jeeger baby. What? Yeah. That's a lot of stuff that happened right there. I love it. It's, it's almost an episode of a show right there. You <laughs> We're know? like 80% through the friggin' movie already. <laughs> oh my goodness. We've, we've dropped a few. We've dropped a few things. We'll pick up the slack later. Safe to say we are going to spoil the rest of this movie. Oh God, I, yes. If you haven't seen this, folks, get out there. Oh my God. Come on. You can do this. I said, oh, nice job killing an endangered species baby, you meddling kids. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. So they actually shock Gamera back to life. They use uh, electricity to shock it back to life. Um, unfortunately, the speakers they were using was playing the harsh noise. I literally have been to concerts where the sound they're using to subdue Jeeger is a perfectly reasonable sound to be coming out of an amplifier. <laughs> at one of these concerts, yes, they're using a harsh noise concert to soothe the savage beast. Yes. Then Gamera gets woken up again, gets the freaking devil's whistle and starts using it to annoy Jeeger to death and annoy the audience. Folks, if you don't like loud, obnoxious sounds, <laughs> this movie's not for you. Yes. And that's not even talking about the little girl with the <laughs> cute little uh, plaid beret who's oh constantly numbing, making numbing noises. <sighs> the, the English version I found online, it's such a shit show. It's, oh, yeah. it's bad enough in the Japanese, but just just the American cut or the English cut is just so. Gamera. Yeah, Ooh, it's bad. Uh, there's a lot of funny commentary where my favorite dialogue in the movie is where the children and the adults uh, and, and Jitler are are describing or not describing. They're hoping that Gamera won't accidentally destroy the expo. And they're like, Gamera doesn't care or understand what the expo is. And the guy's like, hmm. I think you underestimate Gamera. He he's gonna do a good job and not destroy the buildings of the expo. And I'm like, I love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Gamera's very considerate. He's very considerate about what he destroys. And seriously, the the <laughs> damage to buildings, cities are destroyed, people are turned to skeletons, things are just but the expo makes it out, makes out pretty good. Expo yes. is not destroyed. They did not waste their commercial time by uh, destroying it. Uh, but my favorite moment in the movie, the climactic final battle, frickin' Gamera is annoying Jeeger, annoying, 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 with this devil's whistle, and then he launches it at him, stabs him through the head, <laughs> and instead of the children cheering, this I thought was very interesting, the children don't cheer. The children literally are shocked and jump in like revulsion at how brutal Gamera yeah. killed this guy. I love that shot. That I'd love to see an animated gif of that, of just that oh my God. stabbing and the children going, Ugh. Which is which is funny because this isn't even the most violence one of the Gamera movies has got. The pre have you seen the previous one where they go to space, Gamera versus Giron? I have not. Okay, so Giron's the giant monster that has a machete for a head. He's slashing things. Well, what happens in that one is uh, there's a scene where one of the space gausses, it's pretty much a silver vampire bat, is flying around annoying Giron, who has the machete head. And Giron jumps up, slices off Gauss's wing, and then goes up and slices his other wing off, then slices his head off, and then starts slicing him into little chunks like a sushi platter. Holy but then when he picks shit. it up to, yeah, you know, when he goes to pick it up to eat it, he's like, Bleh! and he starts waving his hand in front of his nose. Cause apparently the gauss smells really horrible and he can't even eat it. That's insane. 
And yet no one bats an eye of that. So it's funny that uh, Jeeger getting impaled in the head with a devil whistle is what gets the kids really offended. They've seen too much. <laughs> They've seen too much. <laughs> so they, after uh, Jeeger's defeated, they return uh, the, the statue to its rightful place, I believe, or the movie just ends. I forget which uh, the, the expo is saved, which is the most important part. So it can open up in a week or two. And that's the short version. And honestly, this is not a long movie, so it's not like we left a whole lot out. My copy says, I'm not sure about the English one, but um, the, the Japanese version on the Blu-ray is 82 minutes. Wow. Yeah, it flies by. It flies it, by. It's super fast. Yeah. What do you got for trivia? Like, let's, let's delve into this. Uh, the first thing I was going to mention is, um, compared to some of the previous films... In the Gamera franchise, this one's actually, other than the opening credits, it's not really reliant on uh, previous existing footage. Mm, thank God. So pretty much what happened was, so while the company that released all the Gamera films, Dae, was becoming more and more financially, um, you know, unbalanced and uh, kind of dicey to say the best. Um, they were pretty much losing out hardcore to um, to television, so their their revenue was pretty much getting sucked up. So they didn't want to spend any money on any of these films. So starting with Gamma vs. Virus, which was two movies prior, they started relying on using stock footage from previous films, mm-hmm. including having scenes where Gamera's knocked out, so they start like replaying whole fights from previous movies. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, and that one is especially bad because it, it shows two of the fights completely intact from Gamera versus Baragon and Gamera versus Gauss. Um, and then the previous film went to space, so they had a little bit more money to play with, um, but they still included stock footage from the other movies. So this one actually had a, a higher budget, and part of it was they wanted to capitalize on the Expo 70. <laughs> and um, they actually had a lot of crew members who were working on a documentary at the time about the, the actual uh, Expo. And that's how they kind of got like some insider knowledge about it, and they kind of redesigned some of the buildings using the actual Expo. And this movie came out eight days before the Expo opened, so kind of like what you said, it was a, a big commercial for it. But one of the stipulations when they were looking at it and using the expo as part of the plot was that none of the buildings could be destroyed in the expo. So they actually (laughs) uh, made it clear like, hey, you can use this as a plot point, but you cannot destroy it in the buildings. People are probably going to watch this movie and then go directly to the expo. So that was the biggest piece of trivia is that it has a bigger budget. It has a lot more monster action. Usually there's like two fights. This one has, you know, about three, four, including the the baby Jiger inside of Gamera's body. So it's a little thin on plot, but it's full of action, which is you know, really, you know, fun for a kid's movie. Also, if you go to Shout Factory or Shout Factory TV's website, they have um, they have a series called Backlog where they show a lot of their special features from the Shout Factory DVDs and you can Ooh. watch them for free online. And a couple years ago, I think it was 2015 or 2014, they had um, a second Kaiju Marathon um, hosted by August Rigoni. So most of this trivia is actually stuff that I got from August Rigoni. It was a whole Gamera Marathon where they showed all of them except for um, Gamera the Brave, which is the 2006 movie. Um, so yeah, so a lot of this trivia is from, from August Rigoni and you can actually watch that segment and get a little bit more info. Um, but the coolest thing is, so not only was this movie kind of tied in with the expo and it had a little bit more money spent on the budget to, you know, have more city scenes because really most of the city carnage in the previous films were stock footage from either Gamera versus Baragon or Gamera uh, versus Gauss. Or gotcha. suddenly it would just be in black and white and be footage from Gamera the giant monster, which is the first <laughs> one in the series. <laughs> so it's like, why is this suddenly black and white? Oh, we're watching it on a TV. That's why. Another thing they did to promote the movie was, you know, Kaiju fans have always talked about how they, uh, you know, they've always wanted, you know, Godzilla versus Gamera. Well, actually, it, it wasn't films. 
during the release of the of the expo in March of 1970, there was a stage play. And it was a one act stage play where it was Godzilla versus Gamera. And they actually had uh, Haru Nakajima, who played Godzilla as a suit actor. He played Godzilla, and then they had another man play Gamera. They had Gamera and Godzilla fighting oh as, my a, God. as a one-act stage show before the before the expo would open. That's incredible. Um, and they said it was really rigorous and really, um, you know, stressful for the actors because, you know, heat exhaustion and having to try to do performances. Um, oh and August Ragoni said that apparently they would do three performances a night. But that was so strenuous that they cut it down to one. So they had um, in in March of 1970, they had ten nights in a row where you could watch Gamera and Godzilla fight. That's insane. Something that you had mentioned was a uh, you know Gamera super monster, but uh, this really is like one of the last two Gamera movies before Die would completely shut down due to bankruptcy. So that's one thing is this movie really is like trying to up the ante and also try to have more monster fights without being um, too repetitive. And then I had two other little notes. Was there any trivia that you had? Um, I just saw that. Uh... This played double bill with a film called Transparent Swordsman. Oh, which uh, I Ooh. can I can find the poster, and the poster is gorgeous. It's uh, some Ooh. very very uh, concerned looking samurai as uh, an invisible an outline of an invisible man flies through and just destroys everything. It looks oh my great. god! Probably not a movie you can actually watch. Probably not. Yeah, those. If um, you've been watching um, Joe Bob Briggs' uh, Last Drive-In, right? Yes. Did you see the one for Wolf Guy? No, I haven't gotten to it yet. I am. I am. Uh, been saving. There's a few I've been saving. That's one of the ones. Okay, because there's there's a bit where Joe Bob Briggs is talking about how the low budget special effects movies in Japan they really wanted to be super cheap, and what's the cheapest special effect than having an invisible man? So there's a bunch <laughs> of invisible invisible movies in uh, japan there that is true there's one uh oh god is it the invisible and inv- invader there's well there's three of them from the 50s there's the invisible man appears there's another one i can't remember the title but it's directed by the same guy who made godzilla raids again and it has a clown on the cover which is really creepy Ooh. it's like this creepy chubby clown that's being chased by an invisible person <laughs> the film that comes to mind uh, is the human vapor yes that's one that i immediately thought of that's another wacky one and then um, if it's still on youtube i'd highly recommend grabbing it but there's also a movie called the invisible man versus the human fly i've heard of that oh shit it is insane. I have a, a bootleg of it, and it's from Die. So it's a movie they were making uh, right around the same time as the Gamera films. Nice. Which, uh, that was going to be my last little bit of trivia, was uh, going over the whole Gamera franchise was... Uh, well, actually, ooh, I forgot one thing. I know how you don't like animal violence, but I did want to mention one scene in the movie. Ooh, what's that? Which is the uh, they're, they're talking about how uh, Jiger could impregnate Gamera. So they start showing stock footage of this elephant that has... Um, do you remember what kind of animal it was that impregnated the elephant? Or I don't know if that scene is in mine. Oh, ooh, okay. Because it's pretty gross in the Japanese cut. There's a scene where there's they're explaining how Jiger could impregnate uh, Gamera and lay eggs in his body. So they show this elephant... And his trunk is really fat and they cut open the trunk and it's just full of all these parasites and it's real stock footage of this elephant. And I was Uh, like, oh, God, So I actually had to pause the movie and be like, oh, God, I don't want to lose my lunch. Dude, I don't know if that scene is in my I think I think that whole scene of them explaining it is gone. Oh, God, it is one of the grossest things ever. So I almost wanted to call this Gamma versus Campbell Holocaust because it is so gross. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I really think uh, Mill Creek was like, nope, cut that shit. That's weird. Richard is trying to pretend that he didn't sleep through this entire scene. In his defense, it is a freaking disgusting sequence. It is a sight that cannot be unseen. The human mind can only take so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I implore you to love your fellow man. Compassion and understanding are a rare thing these days. So instead of focusing on how Richard totally fell asleep during this film, let us practice helping mankind get through this horrible period of history. The Doomed Show loves you all. Please take care. We will get through this. 
This film was taken when I was superintendent of an international tropical animal laboratory in Africa. As I studied this case, I recalled a similar one happening there. Larvae had been hatched inside the elephant's trunk. In order to save the animal, it became necessary to operate on it. The larvae filled the nasal passages until the elephant couldn't breathe. To delay surgery could have meant death. As it was, the larvae had reached an advanced stage. It's not very pretty, are they? I assure you the operation was a success. <laughs> I un- I'm going to unpuke. I'm going to unpuke. I'm going to reverse it. <laughs> the Gamma franchise, it kind of gets compared to Godzilla as like, you know, the kooky uncle or the weird cousin or the cheaper ripoff. But, you know, the Gamma movies do have a very special vibe and I've always been a big fan of them, um, including some of the, you know, the really bad ones like, you know, Gamma Super Monster and oh, man. Gamma versus Virus, which has Boy Scouts as the heroes. They're very surreal. They're they're violent, but they're also like lighthearted and fun. Um, but what's interesting is the whole franchise almost didn't happen. Um, so what happened was uh, Yuatsa, they were working on doing a, I guess, a Japanese version of The Birds. And it was a giant rat movie hmm. uh, called Nezera. Alternate title is The Giant Rat Swarm. And instead of doing suitmation or stop motion effects, they were actually using real rats. And the production was quickly closed because it was going over budget. And also the rats were escaping and they were going into the crawl space and multiplying and breeding. So the whole studio had to be closed down because they were infested with rats and they started getting rabies and other gross stuff. (laughs) So that was a, that was their original plan before they made the first gamma movie was to make this, uh, this swarm movie about killer rats almost like willard except you know japanese and giant monsters so there's there's only a couple like publicity stills um i'm not sure if there's any footage of it that survives but it was never finished um and it was kind of notorious as one of the uh huge disaster movies that was never made in japan just because it was such a mess to to film and such a (laughs) chaos and such a clusterfuck of rats. Oh, my um, God. Literally and figuratively. So they pretty much said, well, we'll do another giant monster movie instead. And they decide to do Gamera, the you know giant turtle. The whole franchise as we know it could have not been if they would have made a successful uh, killer rat movie. Gamera could have just been a giant spinning rat in space. <laughs> yes. See, and then Bruno Matai could rip it off. Oh, and it would be- shit. It could be a post-apocalyptic flying rat movie. Wouldn't that be great? Dude, I- I'm sorry I got distracted. I was checking my trunk for little uh, parasites. <laughs> what the fuck? No, I-, I really enjoy this film. I'm glad you picked it. I, I love matte paintings. I love models. I love when they just break out every camera trick they got, the force perspective. Yeah. Like, and it, it's just, oh, it's just so wonderful. This has the pyrotechnics. Yeah. Smoke machines. And actual then, flamethrowers. Oh, and, my and God. Now. This it's not, it's so not like an dangerous. animated effect. They use real fire for gamma. Yeah. It looks so dangerous. And uh, the tone of this is really bonkers. The cultural insensitivity on a uh, an epic scale, <laughs> literally stealing someone's culture. Uh, I wrote kaiju torture scenes and body horror, having not even seen the most body horrific part in the whole thing. Yeah. When you started telling me about that scene, like just a few minutes ago, I thought you were fucking with me. Like, I'm like, no, no, it's actually a, a real scene. I, I, man, I'm tempted to go on YouTube and see if, if it's on here. Wow. Uh, bless my poor eyes. But, um, Oof. and yeah, and it's just, there's something about, you know, I've always loved Japanese cinema in general, and I've actually been really getting into, I recently did a, a, a J horror marathon. So I've been really getting into, pretty much the late 80s up until the 2000s, like J-horror and, and all those different kinds of movies. It's, it's kind of got that special like sweet spot of, you know, there's always something magical about these post-war uh, golden era uh, Japanese movies before television completely took over and the industry was, you know, gone. My, my father and, and my two uncles, when they were... Oh, God, I can't remember how old they were. But um, my grandfather was actually stationed in Japan, like really close to Osaka from 1969 until I think 72. 
So somewhere in there, and they were always t- telling me about, you know, Japan back then and how horrible it was. I'm like, guys, no, I'd, I'd love to go back in time to Japan in the 70s. That sounds great. <laughs> I'm you know? sure. I'm sure it was as pleasant as Italy in the mid to late 70s. Ooh, Especially yeah. Especially if you love getting kidnapped. I was going to say, <laughs> as long as you're wearing Kevlar, you'll be fine. <laughs> Um, oh wait a minute! So the the actor you can cut this part out, but I just found out the actor uh, Khan o- Orami, the mm-hmm. guy who plays the father with the mustache, yeah, uh, who looks like Japanese Hitler. He's also in a movie called Edo Porn. Oh, he's, yeah, he's in some pinky films. Pinko, I think it's Pinku. Pinku. It's... Oh wow, the poster is literally a Japanese woman being hugged by an octopus. Oh, oh, the the octopus is literally grabbing her boob okay well i know what we're covering next yeah wow that's wow that's hot oh is it from the director of oh it's the from the director of that that black cat movie that you love i think hold on you can totally cut this all out oh, no oh, i'm God. i'm i'm scrolling with the homies i think it's a different different no God. that's actor is it is it the same director is that black cat writer movie you like uh, oh writer no he wrote uh Kiro, Kiro Nico. He wrote and directed. Oh, I think he directed. Yeah, so the director wow. of one of your favorite Japanese horror movies made a movie called Edo well, Porn. 230 writ- writing credits and then only wow. 46 directing credits. What a loser. Oh my. Hey, he did Anibaba though. That movie's great. I actually, Holy uh, there's a controversial opinion. I like Kuro Niku better than Onibaba. See, I've never seen her. Oh, really? Oh, well, there you go. Dude, yeah, I, I need to buy the Blu-ray. Right. So if you know of anyone who's uh, got an extra copy of the DVD or the Blu-ray, let yeah, me yeah. know. That's, uh, that's one of my very first Criterion purchases. Yes. Yeah. And they also did Anibaba. Yeah. Nice. Oh, my goodness. That is, uh, that that is, is an intense freaking movie. I'll give it that. I, I don't dislike it. Uh, but yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I probably would like the other one just because I do have a thing for spooky oh, cats. And it, and... it keeps one-upping itself. It gets weirder and weirder as the movie goes on. So, yeah. Oh, my God. Did he have anything to do with that anthology movie, Kuwaitan? Oh, uh, no. Kwaidan? Kwaidan. Kwaidan, uh, yes. That I don't know. Let's no. Maybe? No. I did not. No, that's a Kobayashi. Or Ko- Kai- what? This folks, this is why you should never have me say Japanese names ever. I will offend the whole well, country. You need, what you need uh, is a good old proper white pasty American who doesn't speak a word of the language to correct you like me. me, me. Quite on was three hours. That's the, yeah, that's shit. the final. That's like the, the, the cut that is on the Blu-ray now. That's like oh, the okay. original. Because I saw the old, old DVD. I saw the the first yeah. one from God. Whenever that I have first not came watched out. the three hour version yet, but I do own it. I'm looking forward to that. It looks gorgeous. Just from the trailer that I saw yeah. on YouTube, it looks amazing. I guess going back to the podcast proper, like even if you know, even the most generic and cheaply made studio films from Japan's golden era, they just have a unique charm Absolutely. to them. I seriously could go broke just buying every old Japanese movie that yeah. Criterion's released Arrow. or Arrow. Some oh my God. Sets, Arrow has been doing some of those something. sets that Arrow put out. I mean, I was like, I've never heard of the studio or I've never heard of this era of the studio. Like they would take the most popular actors of the time and just churn out a couple of films, you know, maybe three or four films with that, that same person or the same combination of hot, you know, mm-hmm. like stars of the time. And it was just, it was fascinating. And I love that stuff. I can't remember the oh, yeah. set now, but. Is it the new, uh, Nukatsu Diamond yeah, Guys or wow, something? Wow, that was, thank you. Yeah, there's two I of them. I freaking reviewed yeah. that and I couldn't remember the name of That's how long ago that was. And then there's the like Outlaw yeah, Gangster one. Some more of those out. And uh, I'm going to destroy his name on accident, but the. Uh, the director of um, of Nightmare Detective, because he's also an actor. He's also in Shin Godzilla as one of the scientists. Oh, he was. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and he's also he's the actual guy who's the villain in Nightmare uh, Detective. Shinya Sukamoto. Yes, Sukamoto. Um, they're releasing a box set of his Dude, movies. It's gonna be crazy. And I actually pre-ordered it, and they're all they all have commentaries by Tom S. Nice. and uh, and a huge booklet. I also pre-ordered the Gamera box set because I don't need money. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm I'm living in a Blu-ray shack. 
I love this Blu-ray shack. They're poignant. <laughs> See, they don't scratch like DVDs. That's right. Damn it. They scratch like laser uh, discs. Ooh, yeah. Oh, God. You, uh, what is it? LSC Punk or whatever? LSC Punk. Uh, there's a movie on here. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. I haven't seen that in years. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, one of my favorite podcasts uh podcasts on fire um ken who's the main host he collects laser discs and he posts pictures of them on his instagram page which by the way instagram that's a whole nother wormhole i'll get into later but uh seeing other people's collections oh, and getting collection yes. god uh i'm gonna throw a shout out to glenn rossi Dude, yeah he is, um, he is the master of collecting he's I, I just look wow. at his collection. I'm like, well, I'm inadequate. I cannot, <laughs> I can no longer please a woman. Uh, <laughs> it's not for lack of trying. God damn it. I can't hope that I don't have ego on Blu-ray. Oh. Damn it. So random shout oh, out yeah. there. But, uh, but that was Gamma versus Jiger. Um, now, Richard, are, are you thinking that you'll uh, want to cover some other kaiju or crazy Japanese movies from the 60s Absolutely. in the future? Because we've done Matongo, yeah. and now we've yeah, done Matongo, this. Matongo, uh, I, I like never think of Matongo as, as kaiju. They, they, those mushrooms just don't get big enough. Where's the Blu-ray of that? Come on. You know what? Just because we said something, Arrow I or Shout is going to release that's it. that's how it works. Because they're doing all those Hammer Blu-rays, which I cannot nope, keep up neither. with. Like Shout Factory, they're like, yeah, by the way, Curse the Werewolf with all these special features. You know you want I mean, it. I know I... You want to see sweaty Hell. Oliver Reed. I want to see him. He was he was always Every close sweaty. close-up of his sweaty his, goodness. His, uh, his sweat was 150 proof. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just lick him. Just lick him and you're high. <laughs> Folks, I broke. I finally broke Tyler. It's it's over. Oh god! Oh Folks, god! I'm gonna let Tyler go recover for. Uh, he's gonna need a few months. Hopefully not that long. But yeah, we'll do. We'll do more shit like that. It's gonna be great. There's something Japanese we need to cover, and we're gonna find it. Maybe we can cover Invisible Man yeah, versus the Human Fly. Nailed it. Well, awesome. Well, hey, thank you so much for having Thanks me for on, Richard, and indulging my gamma shenanigans. Your, your uh, gamamarins. Gamerga G- Gens? I don't know. I'm going to be crying in a second. <laughs> <laughs> See you, <Bye>. folks. <laughs> Hello, this is The Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. If you'd like more Hello, This is the Doom Show, go to hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or go to doomedmoviethon.com for the archives. If that's still not enough, go to at doomedmoviethon on Twitter. You can write in to Hello, This is the Doom Show, use the email doomedmoviethon at gmail.com Doom Show episodes are available on record and 8-track cassette. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shadecast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.